Welcome to the program. Today we are bringing you the last quarterfinal contest between St. Peter's School and St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary. <laughs> Let's meet the contestants. St. Francis Xavier is to my right and represented by... By Ishmael, SS3. Anzarelu, SS3. Zile Thomas Moore, SS3. St. Peter's is to my left and represented by Avonio David, SS3. Oswaki Mano, SS3. Kuti Solomon, SS3. You're all welcome. You're not new to the program and you've come this far. So let's go straight into round one. You have 15 seconds to give me an answer. St. Francis. The unit of electrical resistance is the ohm. Define ohm. Thomas. It is a resistance of a, of a conductor when uh, a current of one ampere. When a current of one ampere passing through it uh, sets up a potential difference of one volt across its ends. That is correct. <laughs> Saint Peter, is your question. The SI unit of potential difference is the volt. Define volt. David. The volt is the uh, resistance when one tool of work is done. Yes, Emmanuel. Uh, the volt is the put, the volt is the potential. <laughs> yes, Solomon. The volt is the potential difference uh, across a conductor when a current of one amp flows to a resistance of one ohm. For a bonus in Francis. Yes, Leo. The boat is a, the boat is a potential difference required in passing a current of one through a, a, a one ohm resistor. A resistance of one ohm. We will not take that. The volt is the potential difference between two points in an electric field, such that one joule of work is done when a charge of one coulomb is moved from one point to the other. Your question, St. Francis Xavier, what is the major function of the cell membrane? Yes, Thomas. It allows movement of substances in and out of the cell. That is correct. It actually controls the movement of substances into and out of the cell. St. Peter, your question. What is the major function of the cell wall? The major function of the cell wall. Solomon. Uh, it prevents uh, bursting of the cell as a result of expansion uh, of the cell membrane when water enters it. You want to add to that, Emmanuel? Uh, it protects the content of the cytoplasm. And also confers a definite shape on the cell wall. I'll give them a... <laughs> St. Francis Xavier, find the equation of the line parallel to the line with equation 2x plus 3y equals 5 and passing through the point 2 minus 1. Yes, Thomas. 3y plus 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. That is correct. <laughs> St. Peter's, find the equation of the line passing through the point 3, 2 and perpendicular to the line 3x minus 2y equals 1.
Yes, David. Three white plus two escort ten. That's not three. Three white plus two escort four. Three white plus two escort four. St. Francis, one attempt only. Is chlorine acting as a reducing agent or oxidizing agent when it liberates iodine from an iodide? Yes, Thomas. A reducing agent. Sorry, it's acting as an oxidizing agent. When the tin house cell, tin 2 plus in equilibrium with tin, is connected to ion 3 plus in equilibrium with ion 2 plus house cell, the tin electrode is negative. What is the reaction in the tin 2 plus in equilibrium with tin half cell? Yes, Emmanuel. SN2 plus plus two electrons going to SN solid. That is not correct. You, I said one, one attempt only. Is SN minus 2E going to SN2 plus? St. Francis, your question. What is an interferon? Leo. An interferon is any substance that interferes and uh, prevents the activity of viruses in the body. Yes, Thomas. It is any drug that is used to prevent the, the that is used to cure viral diseases or prevent the growth of virus. One out of three. <laughs> and that is for Leo's answer. The interferon is a protein synthesized by animal cells in response to viral infection that inhibits the further multiplication of the viruses. St. Peter's secondary. What is plaque in human health? Solomon. It is the wearing away of the enamel of the teeth as a result of acid produced by excess sugar present in the mouth. Mm, no, Emmanuel. It's the sedimentation formed on the teeth as a result of a bacteria in the teeth digesting excess food in the mouth. They deposit their waste food out on the teeth, making it brown or black. I'll give them that. <laughs> Plaque is the deposit, to be very precise, is the deposit of mucus and bacteria that forms on the surface of the teeth and that causes the development of dental caries or tooth decay. Your question, St. Francis, what do glucose fructose and galactose have in common? Yes, Leo. They are all reducing sugars. They all have a ring and they are all monosaccharides. That is correct. St. Peter's, pyridine has a very unpleasant smell and yet it is referred to as an aromatic compound. Why? Yes, Emmanuel. This is because it, it, it's having the localized electrons and uh, it's also having the benzene ring. That is correct. <laughs> Simplify log to base 4 of 6.4 plus log to base 4 of 10. Thomas. 4. It is not 4. Ishmael. 3. 3 is correct. St. Peter's second, we simplify log to base 5 of 300 minus log to base 5 of 12. Emmanuel. I 10. It is not 10. 10. 2 is correct. <laughs> One attempt for this set of questions. Your question, St. Francis. What can you deduce about the acceleration if the slope of a velocity time graph is so. Yes, Leo. The body has no acceleration. Oh. Acceleration is zero. St. <laughs> Peter's, what can you deduce about the velocity if the slope of the velocity time graph is zero? One attempt. Yes, Emmanuel. The velocity is constant. That is correct. And that brings us to the end of round one. The future lies in the hands of our children. Children today, leaders tomorrow. In education holds the key. Without the proper learning environment, 
these children may never reach their full potential. And it should not be that way. It looks like what? The boss looks that is where the Ghana Education Trust Fund steps in. So that these children can have access to basic facilities and enjoy the learning experience. Gradually, one by one, we are removing the barriers in the way of quality basic education. We will continue so they too can continue. Get Fund. We invest in tomorrow's leaders. At the end of round one, here are the scores. St. Peter's School has 18 points. St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary has 19 points. <laughs> we'll move straight into round two. Your question, St. Peter's. How would you distinguish the rhizobium cells in the root nodules of a leguminous plant from the cells of the legume itself? Um, the cell walls of the rhizobium will be made of protein, while the cell, uh, the cell walls of the root nodules will be made of cellulose. And also, there's a uh, nuclear, nuclear membrane of the rhizobium will not be definite, but for the cell, uh, root nodules, they will, they, will be, they will have definite nuclear membrane. Two out of three. There's nothing like a nuclear membrane that is not definite. Bacteria are prokaryotic cells. They do not have nuclear membrane. So the rhizobium cells will have no nuclear membrane, whereas the cells of the legumes will have a nuclear membrane. So in Francis, your question, how would you determine whether an underground structure of a plant is a root or a stem? Yes, Leo. Uh, roots have no bats. Uh, roots have no bats, but stems have bats. So if the structure has bats, then it's a uh, stem. If it has no bats, it's a root. And exactly also, what type of bats are you talking about here? Two out of three. Yes, you should examine the structure for axillary bats. If axillary bats are present, it's a stem. If they are absent, it's a root. There's a statement with schools. An experiment is performed by placing a thick filter paper soaked with dilute HCl between a disc of zinc metal and another disc of copper metal. A wire from each of the discs is connected to a small light bulb. St. Peter's. After a period of operation, the zinc plate is consumed, but the copper plate is unaffected. Why? Solomon. Um, this is because the zinc plate undergoes oxidation, and the copper plate undergoes reduction. So oxidation results in the wearing away of the That zinc. is cool. St. Francis. If the paper is soaked with water instead of the HCl, the bulb does not glow. Why? Thomas. Water does not ionize to give ions that are responsible for the conduction of electricity to light the bulb. So it will not. The bulb not the Initially, there was HCl, which is an electrolyte, and that's able to transmit the electrons. But water cannot perform this function. Your question, St. Peter's. Find the next term in the sequence. Five. 14, 30, 55, find the next 10. One attempt only. Yes, David. 91. 91 is. <laughs> find the next 10 in the sequence. 25, 33, 46, 64. Find the next 10. Yes, Leo. 87. 87. 10 Peters. A small amount of water is boiled in a large tin can with the cover removed. The cover is then tightly put back while the 
while the water is still very hot. As the can cools, what happens to it and why? Solomon. The can will crash. This is because as the can cools, the vapor uh, in uh, top of the uh, liquid also cools, which creates a uh, low pressure there. So there's a pressure gradient in between the can and the atmospheric pressure, which causes the can to give in. When a beam of white light is passed perpendicularly through a flat pane of glass, will it disperse into a spectrum? Explain. Yes, you. It's no, because the, the, glass, the glass is flat, and as it is a divergent, a diver, a, it hits it perpendicularly. The angle at which it hits it is not will not allow the this thing, will not allow dispersion to occur. Two out of three. <laughs> yes, it will not disperse into a spectrum because dispersion occurs as a result of refraction. But refraction will not occur when light enters perpendicularly from one medium to another. Your question, St. Peter's. A certain reaction produces a gaseous product suspected to be carbon dioxide or carbon four oxide. How would you confirm the presence of CO2? How would you confirm the presence, Emmanuel? Uh, if the gas is CO2, then if you pass it through lime water, it will turn it into milk, and if you necessary it to decolorize it, it will turn lime water milky. Is that all? And when you access to become colorless. Two out of three. <laughs> That's one test. The other is that it can turn wet litmus paper um, red because it will make it, it is acidic. So it will turn wet blue litmus paper red. Saint Francis, your question. How would you test for HCl gas? Yes, Thomas. Uh, you pass it through ammonia, and you uh, a white. It will give a white cloud of ammonium chloride. What else? Also, it will turn a uh, litmus paper red, and it is correct. Your question, Saint Peter's. Give me two reasons why the exclusive use of chemical fertilizers without manure for a long period is not desirable. Yes, Emmanuel. Uh, excessive use of uh, fertilizers will make the soil acidic, which will create a, a which will create a, a bad pH for the for the so that the growth of bacteria and other organisms in the soil is uh, they are killed. And also the it will can also yes, really. this, when this fertilizer being into reverse they cause poisoning to the fish. And excessive use of eutrophication. For a bonus Saint Francis area. Yes, you it will weaken the soil structure after some time. Also, it will kill microbes in the soil which help to improve aeration and as I there will be no aeration in the soil. Also the Bonus, no, I will not give them up. There are three major disadvantages of prolonged use of fertilizers. It will lead to loss of organic humus. It will destroy the structure, as we were trying to say, make it dry and powdery, and that's prone to erosion. And then the chemical fertilizers may form concentrated solutions with soil water and cause loss of water by osmosis from the plants, okay? Your question, St. Francis Xavier. Give me two disadvantages of fresh water as an environmental medium for animals as compared to land habitats. Yes, Leo. The land organisms were to be in fresh water there. Oxygen content, concent, the oxygen concentration would be insufficient for them. Also, one out of three. <laughs> yes, 
were to give two disadvantages of fresh water as an environmental medium for animals as compared to land habitat. So you have to see the disadvantages of living in water. There's less oxygen in water. Water is far more dense than air, so it resists the movement of animals. It may enter the animals by osmosis. When, if the animal is in a shallow pond, the shallow pond may dry, leading to death of the organism. And then the water bodies themselves may concentrate harmful substances, making life toxic, or what should I say, making the water poisonous for the animals. Your question, St. Peter's Second Greek. There's a common preamble. A particle moves along a straight line such that its displacement s meters from a fixed origin after t seconds is given by s equals 1 over 12 t squared minus 1 over 3 t plus 1. St. Peter's, find the distance traveled in the fourth second. Yes, David. 0 0.25 meters. 0 0.25 meters. St. Francis, find the velocity of the particle after four seconds. Leo. Zero. It is not zero. Ishmael. Two over six. What is two over six? One over three. One over three meters. The last set of questions for this round. Charging by friction occurs best in dry air. Why is this so? Yes, Solomon. Maybe because dry air does not contain moisture. So the charges that will be induced will not be converted or neutralized by the charges in present in water. But wet air contains moisture, which can conduct some of the charges away. St. Francis, according to the law of poles, the north pole of a compass needle is supposed to be attracted to the Earth's magnetic south pole. In practice, the north pole of a compass is attracted towards the Earth's geographic north. Why? Leo? The geographic north of the Earth is not the exact north pole of the, uh, of the Earth. It is rather the, the south pole of the Earth is the geographic north. And as such, there will be uh, the, the south of the, the north of the magnet to be attracted to the south of the Earth, which will be the the geographic north. Leo, for a bonus, St. Peter's, David. This is because the geographic north is closer to the magnetic north of the Earth. I'll let it pass. That brings us to the end of round two. That brings us to the end of round two. truck driver for the Ghana Education Trust Fund. My job is to supply books to schools across the country. Whenever I see the school kids, my mind goes back to my school days. I too had hopes and dreams that sadly never came to pass. I made a firm promise to myself that if I couldn't chase my dreams, I would make sure that I is good. Seeing these happy kids simply warms my heart. It's happening every day, and I'm proud to be part of Get Fun. Get Fun, we invest in tomorrow's leaders.
At the end of the second round, here are the scores. St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary has 36 points. St. Peter's School has 38 points. Let's move on to round three, the problem of the day. Both schools have three minutes within which to solve the same problem. Contestants, please turn over your sheets or read the problem. An operation star is defined on the set R of real numbers by A star B equals AB plus B squared for AB belonging to R. Check for A, closure. B, commutativity. C, identity. D, inverse. That US is the problem of the day. My dream was to become a doctor. I always wanted to help the sick. Now I'm in the dental school together with others who had similar dreams. The support from the Ghana Education Trust Fund has made things a lot better. Their support has helped provide new equipment, teaching aids, improved facilities, and our students loan. We're studying hard, and we know that we can continue to count on support from Get Fund to turn our dreams into reality. You're welcome back viewers. The contestants will now present their solutions. Mm -hmm. Contestants, let's quickly go through what I have. We were given an operation star defined on the set of real numbers and were to check for closure commuted or uh, contestants were to check for closure, commutativity, identity, and inverse. For the A part, we said let A star B be equal to A B plus B squared belonging to R. That's information that we were given, that AB plus B squared belongs to R. And therefore, you don't have to work out anything for this one. The operation star is closed on the set of real numbers. If you're able to say that, you get two marks. Now, A star B for the B part, A star B equals AB plus B squared and b star a equals b a plus a squared. Since a b plus b squared is not equal to b a plus a squared, we say that star is not commutative. And that's three marks. For the c part, let e be the identity. Then e star a equals a, but e star a equals e a plus a squared based on our definition of star given. This implies that EA plus A squared equals A, and therefore EA equals A minus A squared, and therefore E equals one minus A. And since one minus A is not unique, we say that there is no identity. And for the D part, if an operation has no identity, then it has no inverse. So no identity implies no inverse. C gives you four marks, D gives you one mark. Let's look at the solution from St. Francis Xavier. You'll notice that they did not attend the A part at all. They got the B part right, C and D were wrong. They get three out of 10. 
Now let's look at that of St. Peter's. Obviously C and D are wrong, so we won't even go there. The A part, they did something and then said that star is closed. Star is closed on what? Star is closed on the set of real numbers. That has to be very clear. So you get half mark there. Out of the two, you get one. And for commutativity, they went through, all you had to say was AB plus B squared is not equal to BA plus A squared. But since you decided to cancel, when you got to A squared equals, you should have put the not equal sign there so we know you understand what you're doing. Since A squared is not equal to B squared, star is not commutative. Again, you lose one mark there. So you get two marks plus one mark. Again, three out of 10. Let's move on to round four. We start with St. Francis Xavier this time. I'm sure you know the rules, so we won't go there. Your question, calculate the percentage carbon in one pentanol and give your answer to the nearest whole number. Atomic masses for carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen are 12, 16, and one respectively. Yes, Solomon. 28%. Pardon me. 28%. 28%. Saint Francis, your question. A translation maps the point A31 into the point B1 minus 2. Find the image of the point C56 under the same translation. Yes, Thomas. 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three is correct. St. Peter's, a translation maps the point A22 into the point B minus 3, 3. Find the coordinates of the point C, AB, which is mapped onto the point D minus 3, 5 by the same translation. Yes, David. 2, 4. Two, four. The half-life of a certain radioactive element is found to be 500 years. After 3,000 years, what fraction of a given amount of this element would have decayed? Yes, Leo. 1 over, one over 32. Leo, it's not correct. 1 over 64. What fraction would have decayed? Yes. 62 over 64. That is correct. St. Peter's, after 2,000 years, 31 over 32 of a certain radioactive element has decayed. What is the half-life of this element, Solomon? 400 years. 400 years. In rice-eating countries, a diet of mainly polished rice can lead to the deficiency of which vitamin? Only one attempt. Leo. Vitamin B1. That is correct. Which vitamin deficiency is likely to occur only in people with liver diseases? Only one attempt. David. Vitamin K. That is correct. St. Francis Xavier, find the point of inflection for the curve y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x plus 1. Yes, Liu. That is correct. 
it is 2 minus 9. St. Peter's, find the maximum or minimum point of the curve y equals x squared plus 1 over 4x. Uh, it's maximum and it's negative one over eight comma one over two. Negative one over eight. Negative one over sixty-four. It is not correct. Yes, Emmanuel. It's one over eight and one over sixty-four. Yeah, bonus and Francis Xavier Leo. Minus one over eight and minus one over sixty-four. It's half and three over four. Your question, St. Francis Xavier, there is a preamble to both schools. The secondary coil of a transformer has 2,500 turns, while the primary coil has 1,000 turns. St. Francis, if the current in the primary coil is 10 amps, what is the current in the secondary coil? Leo? 2.5 amps. Thomas? Over 25 is what? Yes, Leo. 0 0.4 amps. Last chance. Ishmael. 250 amps. For a bonus, Solomon. 25 amps. It is 4 amps. <laughs> St. Peter's, your major question. If the voltage across the secondary coil is 20 volts, what is the voltage across the primary coil? Eight volts. St. Francis, your question, what is the difference in the nature of gills found in a tadpole three days after hatching and 30 days after hatching? After 30 days, the gills of the lung are changed into uh, the gills of the tadpole are changed into a lung boost for respiration. <laughs> it is not correct. <laughs> for a bonus, Saint Peter Solomon. Uh, after three days, the gills are external, but after 30 days, the gills are internal. That is correct. <laughs> question. What is the difference in the nature of osmoregulatory problems faced by freshwater fishes and those faced by marine fishes? Yes, Emmanuel. Uh, in the marine, there's uh, the outflow of water from the body of the organism into the seawater, but that in the freshwater, there's inflow of water into the body of the organism. So what's the difference in their problems? Um, Marine water, in marine water, the where water is more concentrated in salt, so the water... Oh, two out of three. <laughs> what is the nature of osmoregulatory problems? So if I identify the situation, so what would be the difference in their headaches, if I can put it that way? So those in fresh water would have to find a means of eliminating the excess water, whilst those in marine water will have to find a way of reducing excessive water loss. Your question, St. Francis, the pH of a 0.01 mole per dm cube solution of a weak acid is 3.4. Calculate the pKa of the acid. you 1.4 it is not correct Ishmael 7.8 Leo 5.4 for a bonus Solomon 4.8 that is correct the final one to you in this round Calculate the pH of a 0.1 mole per dm cube solution of a weak acid whose pKa is 
Yes, Salome. 3.1. That is correct. <laughs> brings us to the end of round four. The future lies in the hands of our children. Children today, leaders tomorrow. In education holds the key. Without the proper learning environment, these children may never reach their full potential, and it should not be that way. It looks like what? The looks that is where the Ghana Education Trust Fund steps in, so that these children can have access to basic facilities and enjoy the learning experience. Gradually, one by one, we are removing the barriers in the way of quality basic education. We will continue, so they too can continue. Get Fund. We invest in tomorrow's leaders. At the end of round four, here are the scores. St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary has 51 points. St. Peter's School has 63 points. <laughs> and now the final round. For the first part, as usual, you have 10 seconds to say whether the statement made to your school is true or false. Remember, you gain two points for a correct answer. We deduct one mark from your score for an incorrect answer. You may choose to play it safe, in which case we'll pass your statement on to the other school under the same conditions. Your statement, St. Peter's, only one element in the second long period is not represented by the first or first two letters of its name. Solomon. False. No, it's true. it is true. Only sodium is not represented by the first or first two letters of its name in the second long period. St. Francis. The biceps is an extensor muscle. Leo? False. That is correct. <laughs> Electric field is a scalar quantity. Solomon? True. Oh, no. St. Francis. If the polynomial f of x is divided by ax plus b, the remainder is f of minus b. Yes, Ishmael? False. That is correct. <laughs> Cardiac muscles have cross striations. David. Four. It is true. St. Francis, three elements in the first long period are represented by the first two letters of their names. Three elements in the first long period are represented by the first two letters of their names. Thomas, False. it is true. That is a true statement. We have lithium, beryllium, and neon. St. Peter's, your statement. If y varies as the square root of x, then x varies as the square of y. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Solomon. True. That is correct. The force between two electric charges is inversely proportional to the square root of the distance between the charges. Ishmael. It's false. Correct. <laughs> Isotopes are chemically identical. Solomon. True. Correct. <laughs> tapeworm eggs will not develop into tapeworms when eaten by humans. Thomas. True. Correct. St. Peter's, the image formed by a plane mirror is virtual and diminished. It is correct. <laughs> At a maximum point, the second derivative is positive. Yes, Thomas. False. Correct. 
millipedes have simple eyes? They are Solomon. True. Correct. Isomers are chemically identical. Thomas. False. Correct. St. Peter's, at a point of inflection, the first derivative is zero. Yes, Solomon. False. Correct. The final one to you, St. Francis. If an object is placed at the focal point of a converging lens, the image of the object is formed at infinity. Ishmael. It's true. That is called. We're moving to the second part of our five. We have our usual four riddles. Both schools would want to be the first to solve a riddle. When they're ready, they call my attention by ringing the bell. Let's hear your bell, St. Francis. Let's hear your bell, St. Peter's. I wish both schools the very best. Let's take the first riddle. I am an agent of a major commercial transaction in chemistry. As shrewd as I am, I always profit immensely from this transaction. Since it takes two to transact any business, there has to be a counterpart to whom losing is not a major problem. I can conveniently say that I have never lost and perhaps will never lose in any future transaction. My name suggests I give away an element, but it... Solomon. Oxidizing agent. That is correct. Cool. Let's take the second riddle. I am a structure associated with a certain group of insects. Insects which possess me are regarded as serious pests. My major function is to bore holes in plants. Solomon. Restroom. Restroom is correct. We'll take the third riddle. My job is basically to derive equations. I work with three main assistants who collectively describe every quantity used in mechanics. I help in describing the relationship between any physical quantity and my assistant. David. Dimensional analysis. That is cool. symbols and notes. I am found in mathematics and music. In mathematics, I am Leo Octave. No. In mathematics, I am often characterized as being arithmetic or geometric. Just note, I am the example of constant progress. Who am I? Who am I? Solomon. Sequence. No. symbols and notes. Progression is what we were looking for. And that brings us to the end of our time. Trust Fund. My job is to supply books to schools across the country. 
whenever I see the school kids, my mind goes back to my school days. I too had hopes and dreams that sadly never came to pass. I made a firm promise to myself that if I couldn't chase my dreams, I would make sure that I could. Seeing these happy kids simply warms my heart. It's happening every day, and I'm proud to be part of Get Fired. Get Fund, we invest in tomorrow's leaders. At the end of the contest, here are the scores. St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary has 64 points. St. Peter's Secondary School has 79 points. And so, viewers, we have come to the end of the quarterfinals of this year's National Science and Maths Quiz. St. Peter's School will meet GSTS at the semifinals. Next week, we'll bring you the first semi-final contest between the Kokowari School and Presby Boys School. Thank you, St. Francis Xavier, for coming on to the program. You were impressive, but we can only have one winner. Congratulations, St. Peter's. I'll see you at the quarterfinals. As I said, next week's contest will be between the Kokowari School and Presby Boys Secondary School. Don't miss it. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.